Welcome to the 13th video in the Land Rover Series 3 Restoration. I'm calling it a restoration. <laughs> I've had a good day. In this video, I complete the uh, gearbox and transfer case assembly. It is finished and ready to bolt up to the engine. Well, I've got it all apart again. Well, I had the gearbox, this had to come apart completely. It's quite hard getting this bearing off, but it's not the tightest to fit, so that's all right. Uh, I tried the old gear on here and uh, the old thrust washer. Apparently it worked, but I don't know if it worked. And I mean, we didn't really change from high to low. We just drove it up the road and that was it. Put the circlet back on, hammered the bearing all the way home, and, and, and there's a clearance. I can check it. Even with that pushed against the circlet, there's still a clearance. So I tried it with the new gear, and that's what we've got here. And I'm going to reassemble it because it's working. So I can only assume there's a bit of dirt on there or something. Uh, hopefully it'll work. Just as I, as I nipped the nut up, not very tight, but the last little bit of travel, if you like, uh, pulling the nut down the down the stud, uh, it tightened up, so it was free right up until that point. So the um, the preload on the bearings is is shoving this bearing too tightly that way, and it's pushing hard against that circlip, and it must be deforming it. Um, it must be deforming it, yeah, and uh, and then it's bending it against the thrust washer, which is then tightening this up. Right, I think I found out now what's going on. <clears throat> the circlip has the two tabs that you grip with the tool. Uh, and those two tabs obviously stick out quite a long way from the shaft. So it's when the preload is put on it, it's bending those two tabs down. So I need to put an extra shim in here and slightly reduce the preload uh, on those bearings. And I'm going to just grind a little relief where those two tabs are. I'm not sure you can see them really, but the two tabs of the circlip are there. On the thrust washer, I'm going to grind a little relief so that they can't push so hard against the thrust washer. Right, here we go. This is the thrust washer. This is stationary on the shaft, so it rotates with the shaft, and that surface there is the surface which contacts the gear. So when you're in low range, there's rotation against that surface, but this surface remains uh, stationary, or it rotates with, if you like, this circlip. So I've put a cutaway in there. You can see I've only gone about a quarter or a third of the way into its thickness. Uh, and that is to relieve the circlip um, those raised sections basically when I hammer the bearing on it's bending those down so now you can see there's a bit of a, a relief for them to sit into there we go look. Right, so I'm about to hammer the bearing home you can see there the circlip just in the center of its recess you can actually turn it very easily now but as soon as the bearings pushed hard against it it won't turn that's the plan anyway oh I'm so pleased that has worked this is nice preloads perfect on that and look the high range spins nice and freely so I'm super pleased with that. That is fixed. I can now go on assembling this gearbox. Next up, I'm putting the intermediate shaft, which is another new product from Ashcroft. That goes in here. I'll show you how it works in a minute. This is the, um, sorry, that's the intermediate gear. This is the intermediate shaft. And it goes through here, which is the new hole that Ashcroft put in the transfer box. And this here really illustrates, you can see that the center has moved. The, um, that's what they've done. They've moved the center to accommodate the new sizes of gear. So this plunges into here. There's no, there's a seal on this end, look, an O-ring, which stops the oil coming from inside the transfer box outside when that's in place. Uh, but there's nothing on that end because it used to push up against the gasket, which you can see there, which is between these two items, the transfer case and the gearbox. So that gasket used to seal it, but because they've moved the center, you can now see light through there. There's my finger on the other side now. So I'm gonna smear quite a lot of silicon down the bottom to completely, it'll come squidging through that hole to completely seal up the bottom. And in addition to that, I'm going to put a, little, a very little smear on the smaller diameter shaft that goes into that hole. Uh, that's kind of double whammy, if you like. It should seal it. Uh, first thing then is to put that silicon uh, RTV sealer down in the hole, and then the thrust washers that keep that idler gear in place. Uh, I've put a load of grease on the back of those so they sort of stick to the casing while I drop the gear in. And then uh, pre-oil the bearings in the gear and then drop the gear in and then uh, just have a little look down, down the hole and make sure those thrust washers are out of the way before tapping the shaft all the way in. And, uh, and then bolting it in place and that's that. The gearbox is in first gear at the moment. And that's the way the engine rotates. So that is first gear there in high range, two wheel drive. The back wheels are being driven 
the front you can see this is stationary there not being driven if I push this this goes into low range which as you saw move that gear across and now this uh, is still meshing with the intermediate shaft that is now driving this is through a straight cut gear it's quite noisy it's now driving low range so you can see this output flange is driving at the same speed as that gear now and although this one's rotating fast it's not actually doing anything it's not locked to the shaft so you, we're also in four wheel drive now so this is turning and this is turning and they're both turning very slowly with that gear if I put it back into high range you can see this gear slide across it disengages from here so it's not using a low range gear anymore and the internals of this large gear lock this smaller gear to the shaft you should see that happen now so now you can see it's all rotating a lot more quickly again and also we've dropped back into two wheel drive so to select four wheel drive high range you would depress the yellow knob in your Land Rover, which we're all upside down here, so that would pull this up. You can hear the clunk, and now it goes into four-wheel drive high range, and the front is rotating. Back into low. Push that lever and high. And we should be back in two-wheel drive. There we go. It's working beautifully. So next thing is that, there's a bearing down here somewhere, there we go, I'm going to clean that one up and regroup, just pop a bit of grease on it because of course it's immersed in gear oil and um, and then I can get this this put back together on there. So this is the end sort of cap of the gearbox going on, gasket and um, bolted up tight. Then it's the brakes, so it's the parking brake back plate and um, uh, the brake shoes and the brake adjuster and then the um, drive flange can go on at uh, that can be talked up and then the drum can go on essentially where these bolt holes have been squeezed tightly into a gasket the piece of steel comes up and then there's a dip between uh, between the bolt holes like that so although there'll be great contact here squeezing the gasket it'll be very um, light touch here if you see what I mean when you're bolting things like this uh, with a gasket onto here they're both incredibly rigid and incredibly flat so the gasket has very even pressure on it, but this is not the case. So I am going to use um, RTV instead of this stuff because I think we're going to need to sort of fill a gap. And the RTV has got a much better chance of filling a little bit of a gap. That's the bottom plate done. And then uh, turn it over and put the two little top plates on. And that, folks, is the last piece of work I did on the gearbox. It is ready to bolt on to the engine now and go back into the chassis. Here it is in all its glory. <laughs> I'm very pleased with it. A lot of money and time gone into this uh, this gearbox, but she should be sweet. That's all for now then, folks. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, I get stuck into the engine. Uh, it was just going to be a refresh. We'll just give it a quick paint, maybe some new seals and gaskets. But as you'll see, as with everything on this project, it descends into a full-on rebuild. <laughs> so uh, tune in again. I really hope you're enjoying these. Uh, thanks for watching.